We are plugged in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! American families everywhere are choosing to unplug from city life. I want to get away from all this and unplug from the rat race. They want to become self-sufficient. How can I take the land and be able to support my family? So they're moving off-grid to enjoy life with nature and without bills. We want to have solar power, wind energy, water from the river. They're looking for the perfect property. Spectacular. In an amazing location. Wow. And learn quickly if living off-grid is really all they dreamed. Right now, I feel a million miles away because I don't have internet. Does this look like bear country to you? Daniel Clayton and Angela Cross are heading into the unknown. Holy moly. That's a drop. With guidance from off-grid expert Jay Gruen. Bears sometimes eat the soft pink hippies in the mountains. They'll view three unplugged properties in Washington State. Oh, wow. The unplugged infrastructure is ready to go. Then choose one to try before they buy. I like this log cabin feel. Testing the unplugged lifestyle and themselves. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. But I'm not kicking her. Before making the ultimate choice of a lifetime. That's crazy. Water freezing in your pipes. What are you supposed to do? Will they buy the home they try? If you can't hack it, go back to the city. A lot of people think we're losing our minds, yeah. but a lot of people have thought we've been losing our minds for a couple decades. For sure. Los Angeles-based couple Angela Cross and Daniel Clayton don't have a home of their own. They live with Angela's family. This is uh, technically my sister's room, um, but we stay here. So this is kind of our, our launching pad, and from here we're, we're ready to, to jump off and, and hit the new life. Mm -hmm. They want to go unplugged and take on a lifestyle that fits them better. We both eat a, a vegan diet. Vegan's definitely an important choice to us. We have uh, slightly different well. feelings. <laughs> <laughs> She's a vegan with asterisks. Yeah, I call it a lazy vegan. <laughs> I'd say you're very extreme when it comes to... She says extreme, I say principle. He says committed, yeah, <laughs> I say extreme. They've had enough of city life. Like you're driving up the 405, and on certain days, like you, you just see like a nice brown cloud over the whole thing. <laughs> You know, like, should I? The great brown should I, fog. Should I, yeah. <laughs> Angela writes and records music. I like to call myself an urban hippie gypsy. <laughs> <laughs> and web and graphic designer Daniel also writes poetry, jobs they could do anywhere. I'm working on an epic poem about St. Ignatius that I predict to be the bestseller of 2016, <laughs> the breakout hit of the epic poetry genre. They have a budget of $130,000. I'm excited to have our, our own garden and berries. And then I'm really excited to have silence to be silent in. I'm definitely not like a super social butterfly, but I do thrive in community and he's hermetic. I work well with solitude. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Buying their own unplugged house would be a huge step for this unconventional couple. I have a lot of that kind of stuff to learn, like how to make sure like the house doesn't explode by accident, you know? <laughs> Step one, get a house. Step two, make, make sure, sure it doesn't, doesn't explode. explode. <laughs> <laughs> like if we get those two down, right. we'll be we'll be yeah. pretty good. To hold their hands along the way, they'll have Jay Gruen. I'm an expert in construction, upcycling, reclamation, and I teach people how to live unplugged. Yeah, you put in the hard work and the dedication, it could change your life forever. Jay will be meeting the couple after their 1,200 mile journey north to the Okanogan region in Washington State, where they want to grow their own vegetables and keep livestock. You would name all of them. We've got names waiting. We've got like a list of duck names, yeah. like Gertrude and Dorothy and Penelope. <laughs> Geese, gooses, gooses and mooses and juices galore. Okay. <laughs> I'm just getting in the country spirit, you know? Angela and Daniel are heading to their first property, which is over an hour's drive from the nearest town. 
I like how all the houses out here are they like barns. Yeah. I wonder what this place is gonna look like. Maybe they're just barns. It's like in LA you have like track house after track house after track house. Yeah. Here you have like yeah, barn, barn after, after barn, barn after barn. Yeah. Holy cream puffs, that is that is something. Yeah, here's a commute, you know, beats the 405. <laughs> oh here we go. The first house on their journey is the one bedroom house on the cliff. It uses both solar and wind power to generate its own electricity and sits on over 16 acres of land. This house is perfect for people who are not afraid to be really far out of town. What do you think of this place? Oh, it's beautiful. Loving the Breathtaking. View. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty awesome here. And this is just the first of three places you're gonna see. I'm gonna show you some really awesome properties. Each one's gonna be different. You'll have an opportunity to live unplugged in one of the properties. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, we could I all could, use I could that. I trade smog for this. Might be the one you stay in for the rest of your life. So, <laughs> all right, let's take a look. <laughs> Check it out. Oh, wow. Look at that view out there. I love the window, the wall of window. I mean, you can't beat the view. Yeah. yeah that's... I think that's like all, like you see all the way to the Cascades? Yeah, it's Cascades back there. Right? Wow. Okay. Yeah. It's just rustic, like frontier living, it feels like. It does. Totally. I don't know about the dead animal. But That's a lot of antlers, right? <laughs> yeah. Those are actually pretty usable. You could do a million different things with them backcountry that, you know, huh. you could turn those into knife handles, you could turn those into garden hose, you can turn those into... A garden hose? Gar like uh, a no, hose. No, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can, run, you can actually put that right on the spigot and run water through it. Okay. No, that's, <laughs> you can you can you use it to, to break to up the ground. The yeah, yeah. Even driving up, everybody had, you know, skulls and stuff on their doors, which is, I guess, you know, it's cool for other people, but I would definitely clear my area out. I do love these stairs. Yeah, I like the, the hand-hewn stairs. The interior space is 680 square feet, and there's a large bedroom up in the loft. Cool. It's cozy up here. Watch your head up there. Yeah, I know. I feel like I'm going to. No, I'm good, thanks. <laughs> no, you're good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the cabin's cute, and the view is definitely to, to die for. Dude, I could totally see myself, like, sitting in that rocking chair, looking at the sunset, and it looks mm -hmm. like we get actual, a real sunset right yeah. there. The solar panels here generate plenty of electricity, which is stored in batteries. But the batteries here are old and need replacing. What's awesome is that the system also has wind power. A good turbine in the right location, like this one here on the ridge, can produce enough electricity for three average households. It's gonna really supplement the solar system that you have. Again, it's all dependent on storage. If the storage batteries for wind and solar run down, many off-gridders use a backup generator, which can be powered by gasoline, diesel, or liquid gas. This here is your generator. This backup generator is powered by diesel. It's not really very green. I mean, you're still, it's like kind of well, yeah. dense fossil burning, right? You can be as green as you want to be, or you can be as unplugged as you want to be. There, sometimes right. they're, they're in tandem and sometimes not so much. If you're running solar and wind, yeah. you're very green. Right. But if you really need electric, it's nice to have some backup. sometimes you have backup. <laughs> no one said going unplugged is easy, but you know, if you put in the hard work and the dedication, it could change your life forever. If you want to really go green, get more solar panels, right. yeah. get more batteries, you can have your internet, you can have satellite television, tablets, computers. You can build a battery bank that can support an unplugged lifestyle and still not be in the dark ages. And in the dark, they wouldn't want to risk walking around their 16 acres. One of the really awesome parts of this property that I love because of my background with mountaineering and climbing and rescue and such is this unbelievable canyon cliff. Ooh, boy. Oh, good gravy. That's Holy moly. that's a drop. Yeah, <laughs> that's the one. Wow, it is, man. It's got the beauty. Yeah, it's got the beauty yeah. down. This house on the cliff has many of the unplugged features Angela and Daniel are looking for, but it's at the high end of their budget and low on living space. I think the house is really cute. Uh, really like the view. If I ever need a little dose of existential reality smack, just tiptoe up to the, the cliff's edge there. It's quite a ways from the nearest town. The distance, I think, is less of an issue for me than for Angela. She's definitely more of the social butterfly, and I'm more the happy hermit. 
Angela Cross and Daniel Clayton want to live off-grid in Washington State. And they've got the chance to try before they buy. I'm open to whatever this region has to offer. After viewing the first property, it's quite a ways from the nearest town. Angela would really prefer something less isolated. So they're driving two hours west to visit the second of three unplugged properties. They have a budget of $130,000. Some pretty loud cabins around here. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's like more well maintained than a lot of other places. Swanky. Is that a pool? Holy cream puffs. Other unplugged properties for sale in Washington State are this off-grid cabin with two bedrooms for just under $180,000. This solar-powered rustic retreat comes with five rental cabins on two acres next to the river for $899,000. Or for just over $1 million is this custom-built four-bedroom eco-home. The property that they're about to see has two bedrooms and some shared land. At $149,000, it's over budget, but there's potential for rental income. I get that Angela doesn't want to be so remote, so I'm going to show them something closer to town. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's a pretty cool space. Yeah, it's beautiful yeah. inside. It's nice and cute. Definitely the uh, log cabin vibe. Yeah, very much so. Just a little. At 950 square feet, this is bigger than the first house they saw. It has a propane stove, but the cost to convert to solar power could be anything from $15,000. This is the bedroom. I like the wolf head bed post. That's pretty epic. I feel like this closet's way too small. I mean, I wouldn't even have room for my summer dresses. But there's a larger second bedroom upstairs. Wow, well this is much, I like this much better than the bedroom downstairs. Yeah, this is cool actually. There is one small sticking point, though. All right. This is pretty nice. It's cool. Nice view. Uh huh. What's over here? It looks like the neighbors. Is, is that a whole other home? Yeah, it was 28. 28 and 26. 26. Wow, that's not a lot of uh, separation. It's like a mirror copy of that side of the house, like yeah, a track it's house. It's like the exact mirror copy. Why would you move to the mountains to live in a track house? My first impression is, wow, this is kind of nice. Like, this is cool. That was before I realized that I share a wall with other people. Like, that was kind of a turnoff. There's no land with the property, but there is an open space which could become a community garden if all the other homeowners on the plot were in agreement. I think that people with your mindset, you guys can kind of move into areas like this and, and be the catalyst in food production. Yeah, every cul-de-sac needs a hippie couple. I agreed. Well said. <laughs> Although the log cabin is almost $20,000 over budget, they could have a second income from renting out the spare bedroom. But how would they feel about sharing their space? You know, this would be a really cool deck if I could come out and stand naked. But there's a lot of... Without that, it's worthless. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I can't be naked on my deck, what's the point of a deck, you know? Daniel and Angela are setting off again to see the final property. Hello, the baby blossoms. Good morning. Welcome to your new spring. They're going two and a half hours north to just below the Canadian border to see a house a little more removed from town. Does this look like bear country to you? Uh, it seems like every country is bear country around here. The cabin in the canyon is not connected to main utilities at all and has plenty of land. The price is $129,000. Oh, I think this is it. Geez, from here, you would think that there's almost nothing there. Yeah, I like how it's like tucked away. I know these guys want to grow their own food, so I brought them here to see the land. It's about 20 acres. Wow, that's a lot of aspen trees. Yeah. If I don't know what it is about aspens, I just want to like stand next to them and breathe. Man, I love the size of this covered deck. Awesome That's really view. cool. Yeah, it's a lot of good usable space. I like this log cabin feel. It's got like the log cabin vibe with like the hooks and everything everywhere so you can hang your stuff and dry it by the wood stove. And... Yeah. Bathroom is off the kitchen. It's got a composting toilet. Cool. Oh. I didn't realize composting toilets were actually that big. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Modern
Modern composting toilets are odorless, so can be installed inside the home. They break down waste quickly to form a rich compost that can be used in the garden. I like the living space. I'm curious to see how hooked up it is. Well, it's, total, it's totally off the grid, 100%. There's a solar system that's here that personally I would, uh, I would boost up a little bit, plus wind turbine. There are two bedrooms upstairs. The master bedroom's awesome, has great windows, a lot of natural light. It feels so, so spacious. And it is, I mean, it's pretty big. Yeah, definitely. It's got a lot here. So, all right, let's go check out the other storage slash bedroom space. Let's do it. Cool. So, as you can see, it's a storage space right now. Yeah. Uh huh. But it's got, you know, tons of potential to be a bedroom. Just got to empty it out. Having an extra room, whether it's, you know, an office or a, a spare bedroom, guest bedroom, or, if, you know, our little family expands, mm -hmm. uh, that would be great. Couldn't hurt. Well, I mean, expanding the family could hurt. <laughs> but. <laughs> Daniel and Angela have the chance to change their lives forever. I like this log cabin feel. Yeah, this is cool. With a budget of $130,000, they can choose an off-grid home in Washington State to live in and test the unplugged lifestyle. I didn't realize composting toilets were actually that big. <laughs> and the last of the three properties is so far ticking all the boxes. One thing, there is no uh, water filtration. So he drinks purified water that he buys at the store. I don't use plastic water bottles. I, think that's, I just think that's like the, like the height of human stupidity, plastic water bottles. I would put a reverse osmosis system under the sink. That's something to consider in the price of the house. OK. If you're lucky enough to have your own fresh water supply, you can use reverse osmosis, a system that filters out the tiniest of particles, leaving you with pure water. It's worth it to have the, the on-demand water faucet, you know? You don't right. have to Drinking filter water it. from your house. Yeah. yeah. There's definitely some money we need to sink into a water filtration, maybe even just testing the water to see exactly what's going on with it. Would you say this system is, is good to go? It's robust? The mechanicals are on point, but I think that you need more solar power outside. It seems like the unplugged infrastructure that's already here is ready to go, but also a little bit under what our needs would probably ultimately be. They would have to increase the number of solar panels here to provide enough power, but one area that would more than meet their needs is the garden. As you can see, there's all kinds of really good stuff growing in this garden. Uh, the, the vines I would keep, the bushes, the trees I would definitely keep. Uh, the big raspberry patch uh, yields more berries than they can eat. It's definitely nice to see, you know, a, a full, thriving, flowering, fruiting garden already there with apparently more raspberries than we could ever eat. Raspberry forest. And we like raspberries, so that would be cool. Even if I didn't like raspberries, I'd learn to like raspberries. <laughs> yeah, or find people who like raspberries. <laughs> and with plenty of outbuildings that are ripe for conversion, at $129,000, is this place the one they'll pick? So 129, you know, that's, that's the upper edge of our budget. You know, definitely something to think about and be mindful of. Now, Daniel and Angela face a tough choice. Which property will they choose to try before they buy? So I think, I think we both agree that the log cabins. That's out. Yeah, yeah. That's for us. So that leaves the house on the cliff and the cabin in the canyon. I think this spot is ideal for Daniel's personality. Um, I think it would be good for him in his hermit ways and also good for him in that he would still have to do some socializing. Daniel, though, can't get the house on the cliff out of his mind. The view of the Cascades with that panoramic window. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Definitely a place to have a cup of coffee, cup of tea in the morning. So, how'd you do? And really, it was like a close call, but I feel like the house on the cliff um, just has most of what we need. I think we're going to the house on the cliff. All right, so pack your stuff and get ready for your mini adventure. All right, All right. let's do it. All yeah. right. <laughs> We're about to go unplug, and this is where the hard work begins. Daniel and Angela will now stay in their dream off-grid home, but there are dangers ahead. Just be mindful, you're in, the, you're in the wilderness, just like camping, same rules apply. Store your food wisely, you know, if you're going out, be mindful, there are critters out there and there, all kinds of other little things that go bump in the night. 
and uh, have a great stay. All right? Sounds good. Okay, awesome. Enjoy. Thank, Thank you, you, brother. See you guys. Bye. First night in the house on the cliff. First night was awesome. It was great. It was really warm, cozy. Right now, I feel a million miles away because I don't have internet. And if I want to call somebody, I use a landline. I don't think I've used a landline in like a few decades or something. They get on with the first of the day's tasks. Oh, man. OK. I'm on my tippy toes. <laughs> ah. This is right about where I start cussing. One of the things I don't like about living in Los Angeles is I feel disconnected from where my energy comes from, where my food comes from. I mean, I feel disconnected from some of the most basic things, even the ground I walk on, the water I drink. Uh, so it's actually nice. One thing Daniel and Angela do want to connect with when living unplugged are ducks. We'll provide for them and, you know, we'll, we'll take their eggs. And then when they stop laying eggs, they'll retire. Become duckling delegates. Yeah, they'll become the elders <laughs> of the clan. So Jay has a surprise for them on their first morning. We have four Muscovy duck. Holy cream puff. Daniel and Angela have chosen the house on the cliff as their off-grid dream home. They have three more days of living unplugged here. At the end, they'll have to decide if they'll buy this house and unplug for good. It's their first morning, and Jay has brought them four Muscovy ducks. Oh you guys said you wanted to try out keeping ducks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Muscovy ducks are a good choice for living remotely, as they are prolific breeders. But they need a coop for protection. This was a big chicken yard. We're gonna shore this all up. We're gonna use recycled materials. We're gonna make this thing look ghetto as hell, but it's gonna work. It's gonna hold them in. It's gonna make them comfortable. Awesome. Recycling, reusing is probably the paramount chore. Living unplugged, you know, especially remotely, you never know when you're gonna need that old car rim. By building a coop, the ducks will have a safe space to waddle around in. I wanted to make it fun, interesting. It's a pretty cool trunk lid. It is. Yeah, but we want our ducks. You know, living in style while they're here. Just rolling dirty? Yeah. Nice. Pimp my coop, Jay. Pimp my coop. That is it. We will exactly do that. The car trunk will give permanent shelter from the weather. I will say that it already looks yeah. badass. Yeah. yeah, it's cool. Make sure they have protection on top to keep raptors out. As soon as the ducks are in here, they're sitting ducks. <laughs> Secure the wire mesh to the ground, or you'll have foxes and coyotes digging in from underneath. I'm jingle jangling over you, here. You look, like, you look like a Buddhist monk <laughs> knocking in a, a duck coop. A lot of people who keep poultry don't remember to give the birds shade. All right, it's duck ready. Watch out. Hello, miss. He's so smart. W hey, wicked Duck. snack. There you go. Just give him a nudge. He'll move. See, I mean, I just think it's adorable the way they wag their tail feathers. Oh my gosh. Yep, he's it's getting a piece. Time. Okay. Don't get a room, ducks. <laughs> <laughs> Duck eggs are just like chicken eggs, only richer. They have extra protein in the white, so they're ideal when living far from a grocery store. All your table scraps, all your cutoffs, your carrots, and all that stuff you're gonna throw in here, just let them have at it. If you catch any bugs at night, throw them in here. They're gonna give it the full hippie effect, I think. Those ducks are gonna be very well loved. See, I think this one might like me. Definitely gonna enjoy taking care of them, getting to know them. Definitely learning a lot from Jay. Um, he's just, he's a fountain of wisdom, and you know, you can tell he's been through the, been through the loops before. But in a place as remote as this, they need to know how to take care of themselves. At the winter time, when you have the elder bears, that you know those boars can't hunt for themselves, fish for themselves, forage as much. So they aim towards whatever's easiest to eat, and sometimes that's the soft pink hippies in the mountains. 
so it's important to keep your food out of reach to avoid becoming a bear's dinner. First bit of fun we're gonna have is uh, properly putting a bear bag into a tree. The trick is get a branch high enough and the food's gotta be at least 15 feet off the ground. At home, their food should be safe, but if they go out for walks, it's crucial they are bear aware around here. Just get a good lob and make sure you get enough lead rope that you don't yank it back. Yeah. Ooh. Almost got it, the first try. You got this. This is the one. Use the force. I'm feeling it, man. Oh! Oh, I'll take oh. it, I'll take it. <laughs> there you go. I've thrown hundreds of bear bags into trees, and it's never easy. It, you, it looks like the easiest task in the world, but it's just so hard to get that angle just right. I think it's pretty self-explanatory, Daniel. So you guys are obviously in uh, black bear country. Mm -hmm. Neighbors over the ridge reported seeing a brown bear, also known as a grizzly bear. I don't know if you guys are comfortable with using firearms or not. Eh, I've, I've done some riflery, but I'd... Yeah. Rather not, you know, have guns around the house. Yeah, it's real important that the couple, if they're going to live on plugged in bear country, that they're very mindful that the choices they make are going to directly impact their safety and the safety of their families in the future and their crops and their livestock. You know, when you're living out here and you're rugged and you're unplugged and alone and isolated, you know, you're, you're relying on yourself for protection. Flares would be a fire risk here, so a loud horn would be better, but a popular deterrent is a bear spray. It's not a toy, it's no joke. So the rule is if this stuff does come back at you, immediately wash your hands. If it gets in your eyes, it's gonna make you really, really miserable for a really long time. So this just slides backwards, but this mechanism is just a safety. All right. Hold on a second. You're good. All right. So slide it off? Yep. Woo. <laughs> so yeah, you were, you were a little less ginger, gingerly than I thought <laughs> was gonna be handled. All right, and it's short bursts when you're doing this, so it's just like, psst, psst. Okay. Oh, turn, turn. There's two different ways to handle two different bears. The black bear, they say you could fight back aggressively, make yourself look big, make a lot of noise, you know, yell, scream. Good, give another one. If it should come up to you, they say fight it. They say punch it in the nose real hard, you know, get a jab at it with a knife if you can, and then usually it'll spook that way. Grizzlies? Drop to the fetal position, cover your back of your head, and put your backpack to the rear and hope that they get bored before they eat you. Good job. No bears. We're also safe against tigers and rhinos and all sorts of things. So I've not seen a single really well. rhinoceros. <laughs> yeah. I've just discovered something very important about Washington. What's that? big mosquitoes. And something very important about Living Unplugged is the nightly check on Donald and his duck harem. Who wants grapefruit? They're not dogs, Winnie. Daniel. No, they're friends. <laughs> Do you think they're going to be OK? Good night, Gertie, Winnie. Good night, Bertha. Donald. Good night, Donald. Daniel and Angela are living for four days in an unplugged property. At the end, they'll have to decide if they're gonna buy it or go back to the city. After this, you wanna go check on the ducks? Yeah. Well, good morning. Uh, hey. Good morning. Yesterday, they made a coop for four Muscovy ducks. I count the same amount that we left last night. Yeah, Looks oh, like look at okay. Donald and Bertha cuddling. What croons. Look at her up on top. Oh my ah, god, it's an egg. there's another egg. It's two eggs. two eggs. At least two eggs. See, she likes us, that's why she laid us an egg. I'm super, super psyched that they got two fresh eggs. And I think it's hilarious where the duck laid one right on top of the trunk lid. Apparently she's a, a fan of uh, a fan of vintage cars. Come on, duck. Thank you for the egg, my dear. Overjoyed that the ducks are alive this morning. <laughs> and we got eggs. They're safe, they're happy. They 
they were comfortable enough to lay, so mm -hmm. you know, they must have been doing pretty well. The ducks may have escaped danger for now, but there's a bigger killer of city folk like LA-born Angela who dare to venture into the wild. When you're living unplugged in a remote area like this, you have two seasons, winter and getting ready for winter. There's no in-between. I don't know how to deal with weather. Water freezes in your pipes? Like, that's crazy. Water freezing in your pipes. What are you supposed to do, you know? <laughs> in this part of Washington state, temperatures drop to below 20 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter with over 10 inches of snow. On average, you need 10 cords to get by through winter. Do you have any idea how much a cord of wood is? Uh, no. <laughs> This pile and that pile there under the rest of the tarps, that's about two cords of wood uncut. You're going to have to kind of put yourselves on a, on a regimen, you know, cutting wood all year long to get ready. So as soon as September hits, you're ready to start burning. Right. And Jay has found a great way of cutting kindling that avoids too much backbending. If you could stand back just a little bit. You notice how the wood isn't going anywhere. So like, just hit anywhere on the wood? Yep, you want to hit it, but you want to get them nice and small. And I'm going to stand way over here. Yeah, I've never actually swung a, an ax. Well, it's good, because that's actually a mall, oh. so. Oh, I got the tire. That's OK. Right. That's what it's there for. OK. Dang. It's great to let my inner wild woman roar. Maybe it doesn't look like quite a roar, but it feels like quite a roar. Is that small enough? This kept it all right where you had to go. That's a fair bit of kindling you got done right there. Living off grid somewhere remote, like this part of Washington state, doesn't mean you have to endure the freezing cold. Modern wood burning stoves will keep the house 50% warmer than traditional open fires. Doing all that physical exercise builds up an appetite. Being over an hour from the nearest town, though, it's crucial they become self-sufficient. First thing we do is, Angela, I'm going to have you the very glamorous job mm -hmm. of uh, spray painting some of these. There you go. Thank you. They're making raised beds by taking three planks of equal size. Cut one in half and make a box to form the base. PVC pipe is hooped across and netting is attached to protect the vegetables from animals nutrient-rich compost that won't be compacted by walking on will provide the perfect conditions for plants to grow. Basically, the whole idea is you walk out the back door and everything you need to eat that day is right there. You harvest, and then moving towards the fall when the bounty starts really coming in, learn how to preserve and can and pickle and you know recipes that you can put in jars and keep for the winter because all those vegetables aren't gonna be growing for six months out here in the canyons. Even if you have no garden, you can grow herbs and even vegetables up a wall or fence. For best results, put them in a sunny spot in good quality compost and keep them well watered. Slant, so. Looks pretty good. You got this. Yes, yes, nice. my, <laughs> yes my flock. The thinking is, is give the ducks a little bath. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm enjoying my time as, as steward of the ducks. Um, you know, I think we're really bonding. They're beginning to trust us. They're yeah, babe. <laughs> <laughs> they don't seem to be really about bath time right now. We got a different agenda. What? Oh, what? Oh. <laughs> you know where to go. Hey, 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 Bertha. Get in there, girl. Boom! <laughs> There's some skin on me, duck mama. What kind of thing we got going over here? We let the ducks out for a little, uh, a little playtime in the water, which was really just a little bit of drinking. They didn't yeah. really go for it much. Yeah, the thinking was bath time, but yeah. Generally speaking, they just like to forage and mm -hmm. take take dust baths and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So, what are you gonna do with the water? Um, dump it. Um, I would use it to water the plants in the garden, just recycle it. Because out here, oh, especially yeah. in fire country, you got to be really mindful of, of water usage. I That's mean, a good idea. I get where they were with their hippy dippy duck bath and all that stuff. Great, I love it. But 
you know, at the same time, we have to reuse that water. You know, it could water the plants. And if, in fact, it were actual duck water and all disgusting and smelly and gross, it would have fertilizer in it. So then you could fertilize and water your garden in the same clip. Awesome. Well, thanks for showing us. This is, no worries. This will be yeah, really, this is great. really good. Is everyone a little tired? Here it comes. Yeah, see, look, she loves it when it's splashing. She's like, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> It's their last night before they decide whether to buy. Today's been a great day. Um, and I love this kind of work where, you know, it's like exercise, but it's, uh, it's exercise in the moment. Glad I had a good breakfast in the morning and a good lunch, because it's definitely a, a, good, a good workout. So it's a good kind of exhausting. Definitely been a fun day. Daniel and Angela have been staying in the unplugged house on the cliff for four days. Holy moly. After learning about scaring the bears. Oh, turn, turn. And how to take care of ducks. Oh, my oh God. it's an egg. It's two eggs. Two eggs. They still have to decide if they want to buy this off-grid property. Ooh, thank you for the egg, my dear. It's their final morning, and strict vegan Daniel hasn't eaten an egg in years. I'm excited to make myself a duck egg breakfast. I'm excited to delve into the question. But living unplugged sometimes means letting go of your ideals. This egg tastes just like any other egg. Yeah, it's tasty. I still feel a little weird about eating an egg. <laughs> Scandalous. Do you? A little, but they seem happy. When I've got my own livestock, and I know they have good life, I know they're not going to get killed when they stop being useful. And then I'll eat eggs. It is satisfying knowing that we, we like reared these eggs with the godparents. <laughs> <laughs> no. Mm. And it's not only Daniel and Angela that are leaving today, the ducks are too. So when duck handlers do this, they grab by the neck first and then do the scoop. I think uh, that's probably your best bet. All right, Donald, I'm just going to come over here. But Daniel wants to do it his way. All right, everybody's chill. Everybody's chill, so you try to pick one up. Whoa, whoa. Just grab a duck, man. Donald likes his cage. It's where he feels safe. Let's go home to Cage Town. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let you know that it's cool. Talk in a soothing voice. Hey, hey. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm just, I'm not kicking her. Jeez. Or just, you just walk in there. Can you just go in? Give me some jazz hands behind her. <laughs> yeah, just go in. Go in. Keep going. Yeah. Well, that was exciting. It was. <laughs> that was the, the most non-violent duck wrangling I've ever seen in my life. You guys are like Buddhist duck wranglers. We like to call that technique uh, jazz hands. It's a mixture of jazz hands and yeah. rikki tavi <laughs> It's been a week since Daniel and Angela left LA to look at three unplugged properties in Washington oh, State. Wow. They chose to stay in the house on the cliff for four days to test off-grid living All right, nope. and themselves. Oh. I'm definitely acclimated to how much quieter it is here. Amen. I feel way more relaxed in LA. It was just a hustle. Chaos. Don't miss the hustle. Look at this happy little couple Whoa. on a thousand foot precipice, <laughs> picnicking to the potential death. <laughs> picnic at the precipice. Yeah, that's hardcore, hardcore yeah. picnicking. No, yeah, totally. I think this property is a good fit for them. You know, there's not a lot of maintenance. A lot of the systems are intact already. So, you know, in my humble opinion, you guys seem like you have the perfect balance of tenacity and malleability and just, you know, the fact that you wrangled those ducks so gingerly into their crates. <laughs> I just love, I think that you guys are yep. going to do really, really well. You're going to fare well living unplugged. Thanks. Appreciate it.
I feel good. I think we got some of the green, you know, rubbed off our horns. We may have to think about, you know, a gun and things like that that we're not super comfortable with. But, I mean, you know, I don't want to stay the same for the rest of my life, so I'm excited to see how we both change and develop. I will uh, leave you guys to your, your picnic on the precipice. Aw, oh, thanks. And, uh, we'll you miss know. you. Ah, well, I'm a phone call away. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. I'll thanks. see you. Enjoy. Take care. It's been awesome, brother. Absolutely, brother. Travel you well. guys. See you well. A load of fun going off grid with Jay. Uh, we really love the house on the cliff, but it's a little remote. So we started thinking more about the other house that we really liked, cabin the in cabin the in the canyon. So we put in an offer and it was accepted. Yay! So we move in in just about a month now and, and start the unplugged adventure for real. So yeah, thanks Ooh. for everything. It's been thanks, amazing. Guys. Bye. Thank you.